Hey, welcome back to Robot Cantina. Today we're kicking off the 420 build with an unboxing video. Now pretty much all the parts we're going to need to put the 420 engine in our Street Legal go-kart is sitting right there. So let's go. So we're going to need a table. Now I've seen other people do this. Nope. Uh, there we go. Okay, well let's kick off this build by opening the first box. Now I'm sure I'm breaking all the rules of knife handling, but cut me a break. Operating a knife is not my specialty. Well, first up looks like the new chain I'm going to be using. This chain is a 50 series, whereas the current chain drive in the car is a 40 series. Now the 40 series chain seemed to hold up all right for the 430 miles that we put on the car, but I never really trusted it. This bigger 50 series chain will more or less make the chain drive bulletproof. So here's a close-up of the new chain versus the old chain, in case you were wondering. Alright, what's next? Oh, a little box from Amazon. Normally I don't disclose where I get my parts, mostly because I ain't got any sponsors yet, but today I'll make an exception. Oh cool, these are the pillow block bearings for the jack shaft. Now these are greasable ball bearing units that work fine on the previous build, so I figured we'd use them again on the new build. Let me put up a picture of the 212cc engine cradle, and I'll show you about where these will go on the new build. The next box is from McMaster Car. Looks like these are the 1 inch shaft collars. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe where these are going to go, mostly because I don't actually know. I got these just in case. So this next box is from Surplus Center, and it's kind of my go-to place for all kinds of cool industrial stuff. Yeah, it's well packed. Ah! Okay, so the first item is the three-quartered keyed shaft. I'll be using this to fabricate the jack shaft located here. Again, this photo is just for reference. The placement might be slightly different on the 420 cradle. Looks like the other items in the box are the 50 series sprockets. The small sprocket has 11 teeth and the large sprocket has 28 teeth. The third sprocket is going to be used for the chain tensioner. These sprockets will give us a, let's see, a 2.54 to one underdrive on the input of the Honda transmission. Anyway, here's where the sprockets will go. Now in the last video I explained why we're using a chain and sprocket on the input of the transmission. I recommend you watch episode seven if you need a full explanation. The next box is from BMI Carts in Ohio. I've been dealing with BMI for years. I actually bought a couple of used go-karts from them and then turned around and sold them on eBay for more money. Seems well packed. All right, a go-kart wheel flange for a one inch axle. We'll get back to that in a moment. Well, this looks like a one inch keyed go-kart axle. Now we ain't gonna be using this as an axle, that's for sure, nope. This axle is going to be the input shaft on the Honda transmission. This picture will kind of give you an idea. Well, I know it's in this box. This should be the quarter inch thick aluminum plate that we're going to be making the transmission adopter with. I believe I got this through some random seller on eBay. There we go, finally. So like I said, we're using this plate to create the new transmission adopter that'll go right here. Now pay no attention to this pulley. This photo was taken really early in the last build and this direct drive method didn't pan out. We ended up having to go with the jack shaft with the sprockets and chains. And this smaller chunk of aluminum is what the 420 engine will be mounted on. And here's kind of where that'll go. This next box is from Go-Kart Supply. It's definitely packed really well. And I'm guessing this is going to be the Comet 44 Magnum torque converter. Now I've been reading the comments and some of you folks are saying ditch the torque converter and go with a centrifugal clutch. That actually has me a bit confused. I'm using the torque converter as both a clutch and a torque multiplier. You know, I feel like this is an important component in helping the car accelerate. This torque converter actually multiplies the engine torque by a factor of almost two and a half times. This multiplication only occurs when the car is accelerating, and once the car is up to speed, the converter automatically behaves like a locked up clutch. I guess I don't understand why anyone would want to give that up. 
If you're part of the anti torque converter crowd, <laughs> can you please provide a better description on why I should get rid of the torque converter? Now keep in mind our street legal go-kart weighs 1300 pounds. Anyway, the torque converter goes here. I ended up getting a new torque converter for this build because the 420 has a 1 inch output shaft and the 212 only had a 3 quarter inch shaft. This next item is actually left over from my last build. It's a fairly big flange bearing and it measures about 5 inches square. The inside diameter of the bearing is for a 1 and a half inch shaft. So this bearing is going to be combined with the go-kart axle flange that we previously unpacked. Now of course we'll need to knock out the wheel studs because they'll just get in the way. Anyway the axle flange will slide right into the bearing, well it will once we clean off the tin plating. Now this clutch disc is also left over from the last build. The idea is to harvest the splined hub from the clutch disc and weld it onto the go-kart axle flange. The finished part will look something like this. Now I apologize for not having an abundant source of photos from the last build, but these should help you get the idea. So this thing is what connects our go-kart engine and torque converter stuff to the input shaft of the Honda transmission. Now the shaft adopter is located on the other side of this aluminum transmission plate, and unfortunately I don't have any pictures from the last build. If you can't visualize how this all goes together, don't worry, we'll cover it when we do the actual build. The next item is from McMaster Car. Man, I hate opening these tubes. So this little 3 quarter by 3 quarter chunk of angle iron is for building the bracing on the engine cradle. The chain slack adjuster will also be fabricated with this stuff. Now the larger pieces of angle iron are to fabricate the new engine cradle. This is a picture of the old cradle. The new cradle we're going to build is going to be similar, but gooder. Is that a word? Anyway, my goal is to build a new cradle that will accommodate both the 420 and the 212cc engine. Now it would seem like the 420 is going to be a much better choice for this car, but we're definitely not done experimenting with the 212cc engine. Okay, so the last of the small boxes looks like another package from Go-Kart Supply. This is the driven pulley for the torque converter system. I went ahead and bought the 7.5 inch generic pulley made for the Comet 40 and 44 series clutches. Anyway, the pulley's gonna go here, just in case you didn't know. All right, next is the huge box. It's a bit heavy, so I'm gonna have to open it up on the floor. I've been getting all kinds of advice of what kind of engine to put in the Honda. You know, everything from diesels to snowmobile engines. And they all sound good to me, but for now we're going to stick with stuff that actually fits in the car. Meh, what a waste of paper. Alright, we're going to have to put this on the table. So here we have the 420 big block, and it's also a Hemi version. You know it would be infinitely cooler if it was a 426cc Hemi. <laughs> You Mopar guys know what I'm talking about, right? So it has a one inch shaft, and it even came with a key. Nice. Wow, that clutch looks tiny on this engine. Of course, it's got electric start for the lazy people. And it looks like a huge gas tank. And that, boys and girls, is how baby engines are born. Now I bet you can see why they call this the big block. It truly makes the 212cc engine look tiny. And this is why I don't have nice things. Now this engine's been out of the box for less than 5 minutes and I feel compelled to take it apart. Well, we'll only strip it a little bit. Alright, cue the music. So the engine measures 18 and a half inches long, and that's doable. The width is a whopping 17 inches, and that works out to be about 28 kilometers for the metric crowd. Now the front of the engine measures about a foot tall, and the rear is only 10 inches. So overall it's too big, and for the folks down south, it ain't gonna fit. But keep in mind, 
With a big enough hammer, anything can be made to fit. Let's go ahead and drop this engine in the car and see how much it doesn't fit. So this is the 212cc engine, and this is nothing, and this is the 420. Oof, she's a big one. A little bit wide in the hips, I'd say. The recoil starter is all the way up against the motor mount, and we still need about an inch and a half. <laughs> we can make it fit, but it's going to be tight. Now let's check the hood clearance. I think it's going to be okay. I reckon we can cut off the uh, fuel tank mounts if we need more room. Well, I kind of run out of things to show you, so let's talk about what's in the next video. Next time on Robot Cantina, we're going to get our hands dirty and start fabricating all the custom parts we're going to need. There will be lots of cutting, grinding, and welding, and before you know it, we'll have our street legal go-kart back on the road. Hey, if you want to join the Robot Cantina fan club, then go ahead and click on like. I'd be honored if you'd also click on subscribe. And don't forget to click on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future episodes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.